And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Deadliest Game. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Canada. I hope your voyage was pleasant. Perfectly serviceable, young lady. Perfectly serviceable. Name? I beg your pardon? Your name, sir. Colonel Barker Whiston Smith. At your service. Yes, sir. Citizenship. My dear, you might say I'm a citizen of the world. Of course, sir. Your passport, please. There you are. I trust you'll find all is in order. What, what? British. Oh, dear. What gave me away? (laughs) And the purpose of your visit. A purpose? How do you mean? Are you in Canada for business or pleasure? Young lady, my only business is pleasure. (laughs) Yes, sir. There's only room for one on the form, sir. Bad luck. Well, then, sport. Sir? Sport. The oldest and noblest of sports, my dear girl. Hunting. Hunting? Yes. I've been on a sort of extended safari through the farthest reaches of the Empire for many years now. I've come to see what terrors your frozen north has to offer. Yes, sir. It is summer, sir. Bad luck. Are you transporting any weapons for this hunting expedition, sir? Hmm? Oh, just one or two novelties for display purposes, really. I'm due to deliver a lecture or two while I'm here. I think you'll find the papers are all in order. Of course, sir. If you could just step into that room over there, our agent will be along in a minute to clear you. What's that? Just over there, sir. Good morning. Welcome to Cat. Oh, my. Ah, uh, yes. This is Mr. Mkwekwe, my valet. Y- your... your valet? Yes. You'd be surprised how useful a seven-foot-tall native valet can be, really. I made the acquaintance of Mr. Mkwekwe years ago on a posting in His Majesty's service, and he's been with me ever since. Give the lady your papers, Mkwekwe. Papers. Uh, y- yes, Uh, Thank you. I'll take him along with me, shall I? This room over here? I hope it won't take too long. Uh, We've got a train to catch for Toronto. Don't worry, sir, but I'm afraid you won't find much big game there. Oh, I'm sure I shall muddle along, young lady. Good day. Buana, if they take the weapons... Don't worry, Mkwekwe. All the papers are in order. In a few days, we'll be at our destination, and you and I will stock the deadliest game of all. Hmm. Buona has hunted men before. What makes this one different? Perhaps not very much, Mkwekwe. Perhaps only the mask. <laughs> Jeez, boss. I'm awful glad you're coming home. Yes, Kit. I should be back in town tomorrow night. I know you don't like leaving the city unguarded, but I wish I could have come along. Oh, I thought you'd be glad to have the place to yourself for a few days. <laughs> you get the strangest ideas sometimes. Besides, I miss all the excitement. It wasn't all that exciting. Not exciting? You travel back in time with a cadre of heroes and mystery men and stop Kid Chaos from rewriting history. Okay, it was a little exciting. I didn't join this outfit to get left behind. Next time, Kit, I promise. I brought you back something. Really? What is it? A nice little bracelet Cleopatra gave me. Cleopatra? Am I out of the doghouse? Why was Cleopatra giving you bracelets anyway? Uh, what's that? There's a lot of static on the line. What? Did you just ask her for a little something for your sidekick? I'd better go. Molecule Max needs to use the phone. See you soon. Cleopatra, no less. Every girl in this century wasn't enough competition. (sighs) Ah, well. Night Patrol waits for no man. A girl alone in the big band city? Let's see if the present day holds any excitement for... The Flying Squirrel. Slow night fingers? Squirrel. 
I got a hot tip for you. I've been waiting for hours. How much is your time worth, Fingers? The Red Panda and I have enough dirt on you to keep you busy for the next 15 years. With good behavior. All right, all right. I ain't forgotten. You can make me be a snitch, but uh, you can't make me like it. I'm sorry you had to wait. I was on patrol. I saw the red lamp lit in the third window on the top floor of your building, the lamp you only light when you have information, and I came straight down to you, I promise. That's more like it. You ought to treat a quality informant like Fingers McCoy with more respect. Well, let's see. What have you got for me today? A bank job at Queen and Bay, midnight tonight. What's the plan? I couldn't say. Who's on the job? Catch him and you'll know. Cute. Why don't I trust you, McCoy? I hear the big guy's been seen out of town. That's so? Sure, one of them big team-up jobs. Hmm, maybe he is and maybe he isn't. Come on. Had his picture in the papers and everything. I didn't know you cared. He'll be touched. This bank job is big. Maybe you can't handle it by yourself? Maybe. And maybe if you're giving me a bum steer, you'll be taking all your meals through a straw. Good night, Fingers. Good night, Squirrel. And goodbye. She took the bait, then? You heard it, didn't you? She'll be there. For your trouble, sir. Oh, keep your money. With those two off my back, I'll have plenty. Just make sure you don't blow it. Her boyfriend's got a temper. Never you mind that, Mr. McCoy. You have nothing more to fear from that quarter. Soon my trophy case will have a new crown jewel. The masked head of the Red Panda. Oh, Kit Baxter, will you look at yourself? What are you doing on this rooftop in the middle of the night? Your nice cushy chauffeur job wasn't good enough. I don't mind the danger, and I love the outfit. But gosh, I sure do hate waiting. 12.18 already, and this bank is quiet as church on Monday. I've got a very bad feeling about this. Keep your eyes on the rooftops. Do you see her anywhere, McQuigwe? No, Buala. Either she did not come, or she is of the night itself. I hope it is the latter, old man. I really do. Man or woman, any that can escape my eyes is very dangerous. Yes, Mkwekwe. And this is just the student. Our quarry is the master. Hmm, Mkwekwe has a very bad feeling about this. Still nothing. Almost 12.30, and if anyone had come near this bank, I'd have known about it. Looks like this whole bank job was just a lot of hot air. What? The only way they could have got past me is if they tunneled in. Hey, you don't suppose... Nah, you don't put time on a tunnel job, you just tunnel. On the other hand, if it was a tunnel job and the boss found out I was sitting out here watching, I'd better check. Nope. Tight as a drum and all quiet within. Guess there's nothing to do but play a xylophone solo on Fingers McCoy's ribcage. Ow! What the... Some sort of a dart. Like a blowgun fired from... Ooh. Can't... Can't see straight. Dizzy. Dart. Dart must be drugged. Got to activate locator beacon and radio ring. <sighs> Now, now, my dear. Time to wake up, I'm afraid. Uh, I... I don't want to go to school. I'm afraid I really must insist. Hmm? What? Who... Who are you? Allow me to introduce myself, my dear. I am Colonel Barker Whiston Smith, late of His Majesty's Loyal Service. This is my attendant, Mkwekwe. <laughs> you two look awful funny upside down, you know that? She is strong, but the drug is stronger, Boana. Quite. 
I'm afraid we haven't the time for niceties. We are not upside down, young lady. Hmm? You are.、Oh. You are also shackled by your ankles and suspended thirty feet in the air above a vat of acid. Your arms are immobilized by a straight jacket. I thought it was a little crowded in here. I apologize for the inconvenience, dear girl. I assure you, it is only a temporary situation. Might I say that is an ingenious device in your cowl, the one that administers a painful electric shock to anyone who tries to remove it? Most effective. Try to lift a girl's mask while she's sleeping, eh, Masher? You mistake my intention, Miss. I only wished to send the mask as a token. Ah,、uh, how much? A token, like the cries of the Judas goat. You should really try making sense. You get so much more done in a day. You see, my dear, when one hunts a predator, one must do so with great care. The sport is not merely in the kill. But in outwitting one's prey, in India, one does not track the tiger to his lair. One ties a goat to a tree and waits for its cries to attract the mighty beast. It's called a Judas goat, dear, and that is just what you are. What are you talking about? Imkwekwe and I have been all over this world, young lady. We have seen glories you could not possibly imagine, and horrors that would chill your very soul. We have encountered the most fantastic, unimaginable creatures that nature has created, and bested them all. Bested? Yes, to place oneself in single combat with a fabled beast, truly the most honourable measure of a man. But after a long career of service and postings in the most remote corners of the globe, it became routine. Poor baby. Soon it became necessary to take on fresh challenges. The deadliest game of all, mankind himself. What? Athletes, adventurers, soldiers, warriors, even other hunters. None could escape me. I thought perhaps I had done it all. Then this new breed of man emerged, the so-called mystery man, with powers and abilities beyond those of any I had hunted before. I have studied this red panda of yours. Studied him from afar. I hold him to be a worthy adversary at last, and you will lead him right into my trap. I'll do no such thing, you pig-faced monster! Let me out of here. Struggle all you want, my dear. We need no further cooperation from you for the moment. You see, we have this. My radio ring. As you say, whatever it is. It's emitting a small radio pulse at regular intervals, a distress signal, I imagine, and a homing beacon. Yes, this will lead your red panda straight to me, and straight to his doom. <laughs> You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Kid, kid, I thought you were going to meet me at the station. Kid, strange. Surely she wouldn't be out on patrol already. I thought we'd go together. Kid. Hmm. I wonder if she remembered to sign out the last time she left the lair. Might give me an idea how far she's gone. Let's see. But that's. This is from last night. Right about the time we spoke on the phone. The log says patrol, but there's no report. Which means either she forgot or. Check her changing room. Her street clothes. And her chauffeur's uniform, so we didn't miss each other at the station. Her favorite squirrel suit is gone. If she's still out there, she must be working on something big. No note, no message. Of course, my radio ring. I've been out of range so long it never occurred to me to try it. Red panda, the flying squirrel. Red panda, the flying squirrel. Come in, squirrel. In blazes. Her locator beacon's been activated. She must be in trouble. Where is that tracking device? Come on, where did I? There. Fit my ring in here. Switch the tracker on. There. 
By the look of things, she's right downtown, not on the move. I've got to get to her and fast! <laughs> Nearly there now, according to the tracker. These readings look like she's above street level. Better leave the panda mobile here and take to the rooftops. Whoops. Well, that's every fender. She'll have kittens when she sees the car, but I had to get here fast. She must be in one of these buildings. No, wait. That smaller building in the middle... The signal's coming from the rooftop. I don't like this. This tower's mostly in shadow. I'll use the static shoes to climb up for a scout round first. See anything yet, Nguegue? Nothing, Buana. Nothing since the roar like thunder stopped. It was an engine, old boy. The most powerful I've ever heard. He's close. I can feel it. Buana, down. What is it? There. Beyond the target. Impossible. What? On the side of that great building, shrouded in shadow, a man runs straight into the sky as if the building were flatlands. I see him. That is our quarry, Mkwekwe. The legendary Red Panda. But how? He has powers and abilities unlike any game we've ever hunted, old friend. Some are natural. Others may be aided by mechanical devices. It is up to us to overcome those advantages. Buana! Remarkable! He leapt right onto the rooftop where our trap lies. His physical abilities are extraordinary, but he has taken the bait. The moon is gone. The shadows are his ally. Yes. He may use a torch. If he doesn't, We'll have to hit him with the spotlight. Prepare yourself, Mkwekwe. He should be at the mark in another moment. Squirrel. Kit. I don't like this. With the special night vision lenses in my mask, I should be able to see her. The tracker says she's right... What's this? Her radio ring. She'd never part with it willingly... What's this? Scuff marks in the stone. Two men were here, no sign of Kit. But why bring her ring here unless... It's a trap. Got to... What? A spotlight? Shots from that rooftop. Just dodged in time. Got to stay out of the light. Whoever he is, he's good. I'm a sitting duck out here. Only one chance... Got to leap over the far side and hope my grapple gun catches on to something. Here we go! Amazing. He leapt over the edge, killed himself rather than be taken. I don't think so, Mkwekwe. We must leave this place quickly. But but no man can have... This one can. We must shift our ground and regroup before the hunters become the hunted. Come! <laughs> Well, well, well. I take it from the long faces it didn't go too well. Young lady, you are surprisingly glib for someone in your predicament. You're surprisingly mobile for a man who's as good as dead. Be quiet. I must think. He knows now that his partner has been taken. His first priority will be to get her back. And mail you back to his majesty in nine separate parcels. Silence! This man is dangerous, Buana. We are in his territory. It may not be a battle we can win. Mkwekwe, I am shocked at your cowardice. You have been searching for the creature you cannot best. If we have found it, it is folly to stay. Better listen to him, Buwana. Better part of valor time. Never. If this man is the master detective of his reputation, we have no need to set another trap. We have Miss Squirrel and time to prepare. That gives us... The high ground. He'll know it's a trap. Of course he will. And he will come anyway. And if it is necessary, he will sacrifice himself for you. My only task is to ensure the necessity of that sacrifice. Mkwekwe, I shall scout the perimeter, unpack the snares and the long blowgun, and join me quickly. I obey. 
You don't like this, do you, Mkwekwek? Let me out of here, and I'll see you come to no harm. I cannot, miss. I serve him. It is a matter of honor. There is no honor in serving a murderer. You would not understand. Okay. Don't say I didn't give you a fair shake. What are you doing? That uh, knockout drug of yours has worn off. Let's play a little game. First, let me slip out of this little old straitjacket. Ah, done. Now, Mkwekwe, I'm going to pick this lock holding the chain around my ankles, unfurl my gliders, void the vat of acid, knock you senseless and escape. You stand there and look pretty. What? Impossible. Hold your applause till the end, please. Do not make me hurt you. Sweetie, you don't have the style. (laughs) (laughs) That won't keep a big boy like you down for long. But if you think I'm going to hang around here and play girl hostage, you're out of your mind. Time to find the boss before he walks into a trap. Nice night for a stroll. Ah, oh. Sorry to startle you, fingers. Red, red panda. Uh, I, I didn't know it was you. Honest. McCoy, have you ever noticed that you only say honest when you're lying? I do. The flying squirrel called on you last night. I need to know the information that you gave her. Who says she did? Ow! What'd you do that for? I don't have time for your tough guy routine, fingers, or your lies. You light a lamp when you have information for us. You lit that lamp last night. Says who? No! Says a reliable agent who watches your building for me. He's ten years old and more credible than you'll ever be. I've never trusted you, McCoy. You're involved in this. I ain't. I swear I ain't. Oh! You have asked what I was talking about if you didn't already know. Where is she? Ow! Oh, I, I don't know, I don't. I could hypnotize you, tear what I want to know out of your mind, but you're such a practiced liar and I can't take the chance. I'm going to have to make you want to tell me. Oh, 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 oh please, I'll, I'll tell you anything you want to know. What information did you give her? Bank robbery. It, oh, oh, it was a setup. Some Englishman. What does he want? Tell me. You. He's a hunter. He wants you. Me. Who is this man? Where's his hideout? I don't know. Honest. Oh, 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 oh. He'll kill me if I tell you. He's a cold-blooded killer. You aren't. This is my fault. I allowed you to become an informant against my better judgment. Allowed you to keep enough ill-gotten gains to get by. Let you keep stealing with these fingers that gave you your name. If you think I'd let her die to save scum like you... I'm out of patience, McCoy! Talk! You blundering fool! Do you know what you've done? Yes, Buana. Don't you yes, Buana me. That girl was our bargaining chip. I have failed you. This mighty colossus, bested by a mere girl. A girl she is, but not mere. She has great power. If this red panda is her master, he cannot be taken by you. Watch your mouth, Mr. Mkwekwe. I have served you for honor's sake, for the great good you once did for my village and my people. You were a good man once. I will honor his memory, but I will serve his ghost no longer. What? Don't you turn your back on me. Come back here. Mm, Quick, wait. The hunter I served would never have shot a man in the back. I didn't like to do that, but you knew far too much. I have a reputation to maintain. You have nothing. No future. You too will die in this place. You too. 
<clears throat> the devil take your predictions. I never knew a man with second sight that didn't die with an expression of surprise on his face. Another trophy for the mighty hunter? What's that? Who's there? Your quarry, Winston Smith. Just as you are mine. The Red Panda! How do you know my name? You scheduled a lecture for next week at the museum, arrogant fool. How did you find me? You chose the wrong enemies, Hunter. And you chose the wrong friends. McCoy. That's right. I didn't trust him. Why did you? Come out where I can see you, coward. As you wish. Here I am. Fool. <laughs> What? You missed me, Hunter. I'm over here. <laughs> or is it over here? <laughs> this can't be happening. The mind is an amazing thing, Hunter. It can know that it's being fooled and fool itself anyway. Look. Over there. What? No. In that tree. It's a tiger. Not just any tiger, is it? No. No. I'd swear it's the first tiger I ever killed. And so it is. And there, another tiger. More. A leopard. Lions. What's happening? All the game you ever tracked, beast and man alike, they're all here, aren't they, hunter? Yes. Even the man you just shot in the back is there, isn't he? Yes. Now the hunt begins in earnest. And you are the prey. I will unleash them on you now. Or tell me where the girl is and they'll all disappear. I... I, I can't. No more lies. I can't. I can't, but they'll never take me. Hunter, stop! Boss! Boss, up here! Squirrel. Squirrel, you're all right. I heard shots and I... Oh, boss. Yes, Kit. Winston Smith killed his servant and took his own life. He must have been consumed with guilt to react that way to the specters of his past. You escaped on your own, I see. An hour ago. I was trying to find you. You did some serious damage. Look, I'm sorry about the car, I but... didn't mean the car. I meant Fingers McCoy. Oh. He won't be playing the accordion for a while. <clears throat> I knew he must have talked, and I headed straight back here. That must have been some interrogation. Well, I... I, uh, guess you must have been pretty worried, huh? I don't think... You know, some fellas would just send flowers. Kit Baxter, behave yourself. Yes, boss. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 12, The Deadliest Game, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Julie Florio, Brian Vaughn, Andrew Mazzetti, Scott Moyle, Clarissa Dunander-Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>